This is a recent project of mine where I was making an ugly drum smoker out of a barrel I bought off of Craigslist. This one was only five bucks, but it had this red lining in it, which is food grade, but it's still not something that I wanted to be bringing up to high temperature. So I started with this drill bit brush and had moderate success with it, but it was just really, really labor intensive and it was hard to get enough pressure against the lining to actually get it fully off. So the best option I found was an angle grinder with flap disc attachments. And I think I used a 60 or 80 grit and that worked fine. And I actually didn't have one before this project and I went out and got one for really cheap from Harbor Freight and it worked fine even though I had it running for a long time with a lot of pressure against it so it held up quite well here you see me use it and when you're dealing with like literally putting your body inside the barrel it gets really loud and that dust gets everywhere so you you basically wouldn't be able to do it without eye and respiratory protection I would come out of that thing with red dust all over my face. And you'd periodically, as you'll see, have to vacuum it out or else it just gets way too dusty to deal with it in there. So in retrospect, I would have bought a unlined barrel or I would have just paid somebody to sandblast it out. Here I'm giving it a really heavy burnout to try to get rid of any metal or lining fragments that still may be in there. So I just got a bunch of scrap wood from the yard and got it really hot. And then I did one final grind to get all of that um, soot off to make sure that I got all the lining out. Here I'm measuring down to insert these U-bolts and I'm just marking the outside for the drill right now, but those U-bolts go on the inside to hold up the grill grate. And I just wanted to make sure that my grill grate was below that, that first kind of bevel in the barrel. I'm sure there's someone out there that will say the exact height you should have that away from the heat source, but I just didn't want to deal with drilling through, through that, uh, that little bulge in the barrel. And I definitely didn't want to, uh, be above that because it just it seemed too close to the the rim if I was using like a big uh, hunk of brisket or something it might touch the top of the um, lid so I just punched little pre dents into the into the barrel so that the drill bit wouldn't hop around as much and that helped somewhat but it definitely did skip around a little bit and that's why you see it kind of took a little time and that drill bit is just a tiny bit smaller than the diameter of the U-bolt. But after I punched a hole in it, I just reamed it out by rotating my wrist with the drill bit. And then it was plenty large enough to fit the U-bolt in without it being too wiggly. Here I'm inserting the U-bolts. This was a, a multi-step pro process actually. So to keep the U-bolt in place, all these U-bolts came with two nuts and a little metal washer basically that connected the two prongs. And with the, the setup the way it was, it would basically push all the way through and lay flush with the barrel. So it wouldn't stick out into the barrel enough to hold a grill grate. So what I had to do was go out and buy extra nuts of that size and run two nuts up the U-bolt, then put the metal washer on and the metal washer went on the interior of the barrel. So that, that right there was just a temporary positioning to get the uh, grill grate in there. That metal washer between the two prongs went on the inside on the final, final version. And then on the outside of the barrel, I put two more bolts to hold it in place. 
Now for mine, I know most ugly drum smokers don't have a door in the bottom, but I just didn't see myself um, going in and out of the barrel and taking the food out all the time. So I wanted to create a door. So I used that grinder with a cutoff disc to create a door. And this, as you'll see, is definitely my first time ever using this tool because uh, neither of these or none of these lines are even remotely straight, but it still did the job. And I just used that duct tape as a rough guide just so my eyes could see a straight line as I was using the cutoff tool. But it definitely doesn't st stop the cutoff tool. I went straight through it here. I think you see me cut into it right there. But like I said, it was straight enough to work as a door. And then you just want to be careful when you make that cut on the bottom that it's above where the bottom of the barrel's crimped so that you don't completely cut out the bottom of the barrel. You just want to be a little bit up from where the barrel bottom meets because it's about an inch up from the actual bottom lip. And when I cut through, it was actually pretty lucky. Um, the one side had a little bit of metal still connected, so it didn't fully open. And that actually helped a lot so I could apply pressure here where I'm pre-drilling holes for the hinges. So um, I didn't have like just a free floating piece of metal to drill into. It was still stuck to the barrel. And then once I got the hinges on there, I just kept bending it back and forth until it snapped completely. And these were just two little hinges that I got from Lowe's with some screws and they don't even have nuts or washers for the backside. I just drilled straight in there and they've been holding up quite well. So here I start to bend it back and forth to pop that metal off, but I don't think I show the whole process. But that's kind of why there's such resistance there is because there was still a little bit of metal attached. And then I used two more U-bolts. I think I only show myself attaching one, but uh, I use U-bolts kind of in the same fashion as I did on the sides, but these are for just little handles so I can pull the lid on and off to check the status of the meat when it's smoking. And this, like the U-bolts on the side, required an additional two nuts to be purchased to make it actually work. And this is actually my second attempt at smoking. I bought uh, a bunch of manager special meat from uh, Kroger's with the exception of that, that rib that was full price. Um, and I got uh, wet, I think those are hickory chips. I don't even know what type of tree that is, um, but I got a heating plate with a cast iron skillet to get the coals ignited. And then I put the wet chips over. And then this is where I like having a door. I can just slide open the door on the side. And have access. And then if it, too much air gets in there, I bought some foil tape that you use on ducts, ducts uh, just to seal it up. But I've had pretty good success without having to seal that. And this for being my second one, um, I definitely have some work to go on uh, the ribs and from going on online forums, it looks like there's a bunch of different methods that you can use to make them, make them uh, more tender than I had them. Mine uh, 
Tasted really smoky and really good, but the meat was just kind of chewy, so I have to work on that. But the salmon turned out really well. Um, I just wish I would have seasoned it. And then the uh, the sausages just turned out really well too, but they just weren't that great of sausages, but they had a good smoky taste to them. But they just had a really high fat content, so. But thanks a lot for watching. I hope this helps. Hope you get a chance to make one yourself. Please subscribe and visit basementyard.com.